video, we will take a look at phase measurements using the multi-SIM oscilloscope. Our objectives are to identify a single cycle. We want to the next one to measure the period of the cycle and calculate the frequency. We want to study waveforms without a phase, so that when we look at two particular waveforms, we can tell whether they are in phase or out of phase. If they are out of phase, we want to be able to identify which waveform is leading and which waveform is lagging. And we also want to measure the phase difference and calculate the phase difference in degrees. Uh, along the way, we'll review some of our formulas and um, our basic measurements. Um, first of all, you need to build this circuit um, as a series circuit. A resistor 10k and an inductor 100 millihenries connected to channel A of the oscilloscope. To build the circuit, let's open up the oscilloscope and press run. You can clearly see that the wave form cycles are too close together and they exceed um, what's shown on the vertical axis. So we need to adjust our time base and also need to increase the scale. We would like our waveforms to occupy about three quarters of the wave of the vertical height of the screen. So we really like it about here to here. Just a little above, that's fine. We also would like to see two or three cycles. So let's pause this and slide this over. So a cycle is a repeating pattern. So we're looking for what to repeat. So if I start from here, go to the peak, come back down to here. So this is the this is the repeating pattern from this point to this point. You can also go from um, peak to peak. The time for one cycle is a point on the waveform to the corresponding point, I mean a point on one cycle to the corresponding point on the next cycle. So if I put my cursor here um, at the zero point, then the, next, the corresponding point on the next cycle is at this point. So that's one cycle. If I put my cursor at the peak, then I must go to the next cycle's corresponding peak. Okay. If I put my cursor at the minimum point, uh, I must go to the next cycle's minimum point to identify, um, to measure the time for one cycle. Um, so let's see. How many cycles do we have between cursor 1 and cursor 2? Well, um, you can see that that's one cycle, that's a half, that's three quarters, that's one and three quarters. What about this point? Well, we have one cycle and a quarter, so one and a quarter. And this point? Um, that's half, so that's three quarters of a cycle. Now that we've identified one cycle, let's measure the time for one cycle. So I'm going to put um, cursor one on the peak. Um, I'm looking at channel A here, cursor one, I'm looking at this value here, and find when it gets to the maximum possible value, that's um, 6.2. Okay, it looks as if I might peak at this point. So therefore, I have to put cursor 2 on the next peak, which around sometimes you can get it to match, sometimes you may not. We did this time. So this is one cycle. So the time for this cycle is 200 microseconds. Okay. So let's take a look at our formulas 
VRMS is equal to 0 0.707 times the peak. Remember the RMS voltage is measured only using the multimeter. The average is 0.67 times the peak. Um, the peak to peak voltage is 2 times the peak and frequency is 1 over period. And our oscilloscope only measures the peak voltage or amplitude and period. Uh, period that we measured is 200 microseconds so we can use a formula f is equal to 1 over t over 1 over 200 microseconds which is 500 which is 5 kilohertz which is what we set um, on the oscilloscope okay back to our schematic we see that the 5 kilohertz what we measured with the oscilloscope is what we set on a um, signal generator so now we're going to connect channel B stop okay um, another in order to differentiate the waveforms we're going to make them different colors so that's kind of orange so let's make that um, kind of a dark blue fly then okay um, now we can okay we press run press pause the signal we're monitoring at point Y um, is blue that's channel B um, exceeds the vertical height so we have to adjust the scale for channel B we can, we can make them the same um, slide this over just a little bit so now we have two waveforms showing on our oscilloscope. Now let's start with the orange one. That's the zero point. Um, that's one cycle. Let's bring our cursor over. Uh, let's, start, let's start here. Okay. So that's one cycle. That's two cycles. Um, let's look at the blue. So that's one cycle. We see about two cycles on there. And I cannot clearly see this uh, the starting point here is why I'm using the middle. So if we identify the zero points and look for the point at which the waveform is rising, so that's here, zero point, one of the points at which it's rising here, okay? This point is zero, but the waveform is falling as you move along the time axis. So, so we need to compare two, the two waveforms and compare their zero points. So, moving along the time axis, we can see that the waveform in blue starts before the waveform in orange. That means that these two waveforms are out of phase and signal in blue is leading, because it starts first, the signal in orange. Now to measure the phase difference, put the first cursor on the zero points of the leading waveform, we put the second cursor on the zero points um, of the lagging waveform and we are concerned with the difference in time so that if we come to our measurement um, block we look at t2 minus t1 so the phase difference is 41.192 microseconds 
we measured our phase difference, let's call that variable T1 as 41.129 microseconds. We always need to know the period, the time for one second, which we already measured, that's 200 mi microseconds. Remember that one cycle occupies 360 degrees, that's one rotation. So the phase difference in degrees, um, to convert the time to degrees, we need to use this formula. We're doing a ratio and then multiply by 360 degrees. And so for our example, we have 41.129 micro divided by 200 micro times 360 degrees, which gives us 74.03 degrees. Um, if we look at this waveform, um, that's 90 here and 45 is about there. So a quick estimate or guesstimate, we can see that our calculation is correct. Look at the second example. We'll keep the frequency the same. We replace this inductor with a capacitor. Let's open up the oscilloscope. Again, the waveforms are too close. Um, so we adjust the time base. Okay, that gives us two or three cycles. Let's pause it. Slide over. Again, we're again, we need to identify the zero points. And to compare the phase difference of two waveforms, the frequency must be the same. The amplitude does not need to be the same, but the frequency must be the same. So, and when we identify the zero point, we're looking for where the waveform is rising. So clearly we can see that for the orange waveform, this is the zero point and it's rising. And the blue waveform, this is the zero point and it's rising. So these are the two points we're going to take our measurements from. Um, in this case, we can see that the orange waveform is leading the blue waveform. Okay, in the first, in the previous example, the blue was leading the orange. So we put our cursor at this zero point. Bring the cursor to the next zero points as close as we can. Our phase difference, coincidentally, is also Okay, back to our first example. Um, conclusion, the voltage across the inductor is leading the voltage from the supply. Look at our current example. Um, the calculations are the same. So we get a phase difference of 74.03. But in this but in this case, the voltage from the supply is orange is leading the voltage across the capacitor.